Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's entertainer has traveled around the world, presenting his mind-reading abilities to millions of people. He has performed in over 61 different countries and is ranked one of the top mentalists in the world. He has appeared on NBC's Phenomenon, The Ellen DeGeneres Show, CNN, The National Geographic Channel, and appeared on this season of America's Got Talent. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Have you ever been certain your telephone would ring in the next 10 seconds? Or have you ever walked down a strange street and had the feeling that you knew what lay beyond the unturned corner? Yes? Then you've had a brief encounter with the world of the unknown. You are ready for the actual human experience that follows. Today, I've enlisted the help of Wayne Hoffman, world famous mentalist and illusionist. Uh, we brought in Wayne Hoffman. He's a mentalist and illusionist. Yes. not only read your thoughts, but influence them as well. Meet Wayne Hoffman. Are you guys ready? Let's rock and roll. I don't want to waste any time. Let's get started right now. Everybody put your thumbs down and your palms out. Good. Put your left arm over your right arm. And if you are drunk, it is like this. Good, front row's with me. Grab your fingers together. Go a little up, go a little down, and now try this. Take your time, you're gonna be there a while. No? If that didn't work, try this one instead. Everyone take your hands like this, fingers together. Go like this, keep going like this. Thank you! Thank you very much. Are you guys ready for a crazy show? Yeah. Well, let's get started. So, quick poll. How many of you believe it might be possible to predict the future? Round of applause if you think it might be possible. That's some of you. On the flip side, how many of you believe it is not possible to predict the future? Some of you. How many of you aren't sure? Round of applause. And how many of you just don't care? Round of applause. At least you're honest. Well, we're going to find out if it's possible to predict the future, and we're going to end the debate right here, right now, with this paper airplane. Janine is a professional paper maker and make paper airplane thrower, and she travels around the world winning international competitions in paper airplane making and throwing. Tonight, yes, indeed, she is going to throw this into the crowd, and whoever, uh, whoever it hits in the face, uh, you are going to take the paper airplane out of your eyeball, and you are going to join us. You're going to bring the paper airplane uh, up here, and you're going to help us out with something very cool, very weird, and very strange. So everybody, heads up! Where is it? Is that you? Come on up here. Bring that up. Let's give her a big round of applause. Come on, give it up! Welcome to the party, Miss Caitlin. Have that right here. You're a sweetheart. Keep it going for it. Come on, give it up. Welcome. I just need you right there. Cool. Let's give her a round of applause. Come on. Now, do me a big favor. Clear your mind. That was easy. <laughs> now say the first number that comes to your mind between 1 and 100. Whatever 50. You... Wow, 50. That was very quick. That was, you didn't, is that the number of husbands you have? Why, why did I? No. Random? Hang on to this. Is it meaningful in any way or is it random? Random. Totally random. Well, I knew you were going to say that. Thank you. That's just a sobriety test to see how many people go, how did he know? 
Well, here's the thing. I can prove it. Uh, you guys know how every plane has a name, right? A name and a number, like a Boeing 747, a B-52, Airbus 320. Well, here's the thing. Even though we make our uh, uh, paper airplane out of computer paper, Janine makes this, we name every single one of our planes. Speaking of names, tell everybody your first name. Get real close to the mic. Tell everyone. Nancy. Nancy. By the way, let me shake your hand. Thank you for participating. Nancy, do me a big favor. Nancy, a moment ago you said 50 off the top of your head. Well, that's weird. See, we name every single one of our planes. On the wing of every paper airplane before the show, we print a random name and a random number as a prediction, <laughs> don't urinate yet, wait till the end. We print it right on the, ring, on the wing. Uh, do me a favor, read what's printed across the plane. Nancy 50. The Nancy 50. Let's give it up for her. That's step one. Now follow me. I need you to step right over here, right into the throne. We have one more thing for you. You can lay the paper airplane on the table just for a moment. You can keep that as a little memento. But I went a step further. Janine's going to hand me one of the books off of my desk over here, and you're going to use it as a little tool. Thank you, Janine. You're going to open this up to any page that you want. Uh, here I open to pages 24 and 25. Whatever you open up to, you're just going to memorize whatever page numbers you open up to. So for example, <clears throat> 160, 161. You got it? Got it. Now here's the thing. We can't see what you're doing. So take the book and hold it with the pages toward you like this. Hold it up and open it somewhere in the middle at random. Just pop it open, memorize those page numbers, and then shut the book. You got them? Don't tell anyone. Lock it in your mind. I'll take this. Caitlin's going to hand you a dry erase board. What I want you to do is take that marker, and on it, I want you to write both page numbers, but make them really big. The first page number here, maybe a little line, and then the second page number here. Make it really big, very uh, thick and dark, so the people in the cheap seats can see. <laughs> now, here's the thing. About a month ago, I was on vacation, and I took my iPhone out while I was on vacation and made a video prediction of what I thought was going to occur right here tonight. Take a look at the screens. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Wayne Hoffman checking in from uh, a kayak in the middle of French Polynesia. Right now, I'm in Bora Bora, sitting in a, uh, a kayak in the middle of the, uh, the bay here, and I had a, just had a weird feeling. I have a feeling that there's a show coming up, and I have a prediction for that show. And if you're watching this right now, it means you're part of that prediction. Right now, you are part of the show. I have a feeling that the person on stage right now... That's you, Nancy. ...is thinking of the numbers 92 and 93. How close did I get? 92 and 93, right on the money! Well done, I'll take that marker from you. You can grab the plane and let me shake your hand and you can grab a seat. Let's give it up for Nancy, everybody. <laughs> yes, indeed. Mind equals blown. So after I studied uh, precognition and predicting the future, I went a step farther and I started studying thought reading, the ability to figure out what people were thinking. And right here, right now, I'm going to show you how I trained to become a mind reader. Uh, and right now, Caitlin's going to throw this red ball that we painted, this steel ball that we painted red into the audience, uh, and, and she's going to hit someone. Whoever it hits, you're going to catch it, you're going to stand up to volunteer, and then you're going to throw it in a random direction one more time to select a second random person to help us out. The only stipulation for this one is if you need reading glasses to read, you need to bring them with you. So everybody, heads up. Ooh, that was a good one. That was a good one. Do you want to help me out? Go ahead, stand up, and we'll throw it one more time. Right there, you want to help me? Come on up here. Let's give these two a big round of applause. Come on. Come on up. You can come this way. That's probably easier. Yeah. Come on up. Let's rock and roll. Very good. Watch that last step. Very good. What's your name? Julia. Julia, welcome to the party. Julia, we're going to ask you to sit right here in the chair. Grab a seat, relax, and enjoy. Come on over. What's your name? Judy. Judy, yep. we need you in the throne right here. Let's give it up for these two, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, give it up. <laughs> Let's rock and roll. So uh, here's the fun part. We're going to try a little experiment with both of you. Grab one of the books at random off the table. It doesn't really matter. And hand it to me. 
And I'm going to run through the book, just like this, through all the pages. Anytime you feel like it, I want you to yell, stop. And whatever word happens to be in the corner, like, for example, becoming or treasures, you're just going to memorize whatever word you see there. All right, you ready? So yell, stop, anytime you want. Stop. Right there? Do you see a word? Mm -hmm. Do you want to keep it or do you want to change it? Keep it. Keep it? All right. Don't say it out loud. Just lock it in your mind. Don't sign language it. Don't whisper it. Just think of it. You're next. We'll just grab some, I guess here, it doesn't really matter. Grab a book and open it to anywhere you want. Just open it to a page. Okay. Yeah. And just open it all the way. Yeah. Memorize, look for a really long word this time. Let's, let's make, not make it random, but purposely look for something bigger than eight, nine, ten letters if you can find one. Something you feel might be hard for a mind reader to get. Then I want you to memorize it and then shut the book. You got one? Give me both books. Just think of it. Same thing. Don't tell anyone. Just lock it in your mind. Think of it over and over. Now, we have two randomly selected ladies thinking of two randomly selected words. And for the hard part, I have to read a woman's mind. <laughs> Twice. We're going to start over here. Now, the first thing that I learned how to do in one of the most difficult is called Hellstromism, a.k.a muscle reading. You can actually feel a person's thought through their muscle if you know what you're looking for. Uh, you're right-handed? Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> Hold out your right arm and just think of the word. Think of the spelling and the letters, what it looks like, and just concentrate on it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now in reverse. Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M, L, K, J, H, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. It's a lot of sobriety tests. <laughs> A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M, L, K, J, H, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. All right, I'm getting letters. You can relax your arm. They don't make sense, however, in the order that I'm getting them. However, if I take a second and I rearrange all the letters that I got and I put the S at the end, I put the H second, it makes a lot more sense. Do me a favor, raise your hand really high. If I say the word that you're thinking of, you're going to drop your hand, stand up and walk off the stage and go to your seat, if I'm correct. Now, if I'm incorrect, you're just going to stay here with your hand up for the rest of the show. It's a weird word, but I'm going to roll with it. If you were thinking of the word charities, grab a seat in the audience. We got it! Well done! <laughs> Hi. Step two. I learned very quickly you cannot just go up to a random stranger in public and in order to read their mind, you, you can't just like grab their arm and go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G, G. It's weird and highly illegal. So I had to figure out a way to do it just by looking at someone. Winks, blinks, smiles, breathing patterns. Uh, all the little things that we do translate from movement into letters. It's subconscious thought coming out as movement. All I want you to do is clear your mind and think of the word. Now, I'm going to watch everything, like the fact that she's holding the fingers of her right hand in her lap right now. It tells me a lot already. Just look at me. Think of the word. Weird question. When you were pondering a, a, a word to choose in the beginning, did you almost choose a different word? Yeah? yeah I know. I'm getting something. I'll tell you what, the things that I'm getting the strongest, I'm going to go with this. What was the first letter of the word that you actually chose? Tell, tell me. P, because I got P-H out of your mind. Keep thinking. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y, Z. I'm getting a lot more from you than I wanted, ma'am. <laughs> I'm getting something like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, there you go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Did 
you know what that little smile means, the tension in your cheeks? No? I do. <laughs> I still got it. I'm getting a word from you. Uh, I don't know if it's what you're thinking. We're going to find out in a moment. Ra don't say it out loud, but raise your hand if you can read what I have written here. Can you guys see this? People in the cheap seats, smoking section, we cool? All right, so this is what I'm getting. You never truly know what a person has on their mind until they tell you. So we're about to find out right now uh, how close I got. Uh, for the first time, please tell us all, what word were you thinking of? Photographer. Like this? There you go. Let's give her a big round of applause. Come on, give it up. Let me shake your hand. Well done. Enjoy the rest of the show. Keep it going for her. Come on. <laughs> no, and I thank you. One more time for both of them. Come on, let them hear you. Mind equals blown. So, after I started precognition and studying predicting things, and then I moved on to thought reading and things like that, I started studying other strange phenomenon in our world, just weird things. Uh, and that's when I started studying a weird story that, well, it inspired the, the little routine and experiment you're about to see right here. It's the story of Jim Lewis and Jim Springer. They're a set of identical twin brothers that uh, grew up to be in their 40s in separate families, not knowing that the other even existed. They grew up having no clue they even had a twin. The University of Minnesota discovered the twin brothers, independently interviewed them, and when they did, they were blown away. Because their lives, even though they never met, were exactly the same in every single way, down to the year-making model of the car they drove, the, the job they had, their hobbies, the way they dressed, everything. Um, right now, I'm going to show you some slides up on the screens here. Uh, originally, I was going to perform what you're about to see years ago on NBC uh, with a set of twins that you might be familiar with. Uh, coming up on the screen, you can see here the Olsen twins. Um, this is part of my private photo collection of them. But anyway, I needed to do more research after reading about these guys. The co-founding editors of the Guinness Book of World Records, they were twins. Not many people know that. But on November 27, 1975, one of the twin brothers was shot and killed on his doorstep in London, England. He was assassinated. At that exact moment, 30 miles away, his twin brother collapsed on the ground. Holding the spot, his brother was shot 30 miles away. It's like he knew it, like he sensed it somehow. And after all my research in this weird field, I realized it's not just twins that have this connection, but father-son, mother-daughter, co-workers, married couples. Uh, you can create this unspoken bond with other people. Um, in fact, how about this? You probably even know what I'm talking about. Did you ever think of a person, and maybe somebody you haven't spoken to in a while, or you're thinking of them or talking about them, and all of a sudden, your phone rings, and it's the person calling you that you were just thinking about. Round of applause if you've ever had that experience, yeah? <laughs> See, it happens to everybody. So I wanted to find out what that thing was, and I think I've done it. So for this experiment, I'm going to need two people to participate. Uh, the only stipulation is you can't be random strangers. You have to know one another. Now, the longer the connection is, the better. So if you're connected for at least 10 years and you've known each other for at least 10 years, that's perfect. Um, now, I, I always start at the top of the food chain and I work my way down. So let me start at the top. Are there any twins in the room by chance? Are there actual, are, are there twins, yeah? Yeah, I, did you, the, now the next question is, do you want to help me out with something awesome? Do you guys want to do it? Yeah? If you do, come on up here. They're going to do it! We have some twins. Let's give it up for them, ladies and gentlemen. Come on! Oh, you're a very lucky audience tonight. This is going to be awesome. Come on up those stairs, one step at a time. Watch your step. Welcome to the party. What's your name? Haley. Haley, and you are? What is it? Hannah? Haley, I need you here. Hannah, you're going to follow me to the other side. Right about there. Let's give these two another round of applause. Come on. <laughs> All right. You two have an easy job. Now, have either of you ever seen my show, or do you have any idea what's about to happen? No? 
Cool. It's very simple. Uh, I'm just going to have you go through some simple things, like you'll hold out your arm or hold up numbers, like one or two. It's very easy. Um, you just need to listen to the, the instructions, all right? So uh, step one, now you are twins, so I just have a quick question for you here. Let's start here. What is your birthday? September 25th. September 25th. <laughs> and your, your birthday? September 25th. <laughs> this is getting weird already. What are the chances? Coincidence? I think not. Actually, I said that at a show. I had twins years ago. They, <laughs> they go April 14th. And I went over there, and they were like April 15th. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, really. And they go, no, really, born at 11.59 and 12.01 a.m. the next day. Twins born on a different day. Ninja'd my brain, too. <laughs> anyway, easy job for you ladies. Now, you both have long sleeves, so I'm going to ask. Uh, you can either take your sweater off or you can roll your sleeves up to your elbow. We just need some airflow. Uh, it's entirely up to you. And if you want to, uh, yep, I'll take them. And we have a coat hanger over here for you. So, uh, yep, I'll hang these up for you. And you can find these on eBay tomorrow morning. <laughs> They'll be right here for you. All right? <laughs> Let's do it. So, step one. I want both of you ladies to turn your bodies toward one another and face each other. Now, I want you to memorize what each other looks like. It shouldn't be hard. <laughs> but more importantly, memorize what she's wearing right now. Take a look at her pants, the top. Take a look at how the lights hit her face and cast a shadow. Memorize where those shadows are. If she's wearing anything like a hair tie on her wrist, take a look at where her shoelaces are. Get all the details you can, because in a moment, we're going to have you close your eyes, and I want you to be able to picture how you see each other right now. So get that image locked in your mind. Just keep concentrating. Now, I'm going to take a break uh, at the bar, so you have 37 minutes of silence to memorize. <laughs> and take your time. I get paid by the hour. I'm joking, you don't have 37 minutes, but I'll give you a few seconds longer. Perfect. Now, I'll take your glasses. You won't need them. Same thing here. And uh, the ladies are going to come out, and they are going to blindfold you right now so that uh, we know you can't see, but since your glasses are off, you probably can't see anyway. <laughs> Don't worry, they don't do it too tightly, you'll be just fine. Look at this guy in the front row, he's like, yep, that's how you do it. <laughs> the Christian Gray starter kit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Available from this guy. All right, ladies, listen carefully. I want both of you to take a deep breath in. Exhale and breathe normally. I want you to begin to relax and picture your sister in your mind. Try to lock that image in your mind. Recall what she looks like at this moment. Now, I want both of you to hold out your uh, left arm straight out, palm down toward one another. All right? And you want to aim toward each other, a little higher here, fingers together. Same thing over here, a little higher. Now, I want you to imagine that right now there's a weird spark of energy between your fingertips. Imagine this energy goes up your arm, across your shoulders, down into your other arm. Imagine it consumes your entire body. And imagine it relaxes you. I want both of you to slowly lower your arm down by your side, all the way down. And turn your body so you're facing the audience. Now just listen to the sound of my voice. In a moment, I'm going to be taking an object, something very soft and gentle, and I'm going to be brushing it on one of you. All you have to do is memorize where you feel it and the number of times you feel it there. Okay, so I'll give you a little example. Let's say I brush you on the right leg two times. In your mind, just to yourself, you're going to say it was two times on my right leg. You're going to memorize where and the number of times you felt it there. Just so I know that you understand what you're about to do, I want you to just nod your head up and down if you're with me and you understand. Yeah? All right. Now I'm going to point something out. You're going to feel it in three different places on your body. And you're going to feel two completely different sensations. But it'll be very clear and very easy to memorize. 
So from this point forward, just focus in on your body. Now, before I do this, I'm going to connect something around their body called an aura. There are certain people on this planet that believe you can see an energy that surrounds us, and they claim they can see it and that they're different colors and that it has different meanings. I'm going to try to connect that energy between these two twins right now. Ladies, all I want you to do is hold out your arm, your right arm, straight out, palm down toward the audience. Perfect. Keep it straight out. And just listen to the sound of my voice and pay attention to your body. Now, you're not going to feel anything right now because I'm not doing anything right now. I'm just connecting that energy that extends a few feet off of the body. However, in a moment, if you feel some stuff, you're just going to memorize where you feel it and the number of times you feel it there. So just keep that arm extended. Keep it straight out in front of you. Just picture your sister. Take a deep breath in. Mm -hmm, that's right. I'm going to start asking you ladies a series of questions starting right now. And I want you to answer these questions with your body language and not your mouth. You'll understand what I mean as we go along. But ladies and gentlemen, Watch their responses to these questions. Question number one is as follows. Listen closely and listen to nothing other than the sound of my voice. If you felt me take something very soft and gentle and brush it somewhere on your arm or wrist, I want you to take your left pointer finger, your left index finger that is, and right now touch it and hold it to the spot on your arm where you felt that. Interesting. Take that finger on your arm and mimic the motion on your arm of how you felt it there. Was it a tap on your arm? Was it a stroke down your arm? Show us with your finger. Stroking motion? Mm-hmm, that's right. Drop both arms down by your side. I want you to think back to when you felt that on your arm a moment ago, and I want you to try to remember the number of individual strokes you felt down your arm. When you think you can remember, I want you to hold your right hand high above your head, and hold up the number of fingers that corresponds to how many times you felt it on your arm there. Show us when you think you got it. Twice. Right on the money. Drop your arms down. Next question. Listen to the sound of my voice. Next question. If you felt me brush you somewhere on your head or your face, take your right pointer finger and touch it and hold it to the spot where you felt that. Shut up. <laughs> this is getting weird. Take your right hand, hold it up high. Show us the number of times you felt it there. Just once. That's right. Drop your arms down. Clear your minds. Now, ticklish brushes are one thing because it's so soft and gentle. However, a poke tap or a prod is a different story because it's more stern, it's more definable. If you felt that poke, tap, or prod, if you can reach it, I want you to take your right pointer finger, your right index finger, and try to reach and touch the exact spot where you felt that poke. Do it now. <laughs> Weird. You're both doing an excellent job. Take that same hand. Hold it up high. Show us the number of times you felt it there. Just once. Drop your arm down. Now, we're going to add one more thing in just because they're doing such an awesome job. We'll see how close we can get. Now, I don't know if this will work. It's hit or miss on this extra one, but we'll find out. If you feel something, just go with the flow. Again, you're both doing an awesome job. Now, if you felt me grab your arm, lift it up, take a Sharpie marker and draw an X on it. If you felt that, raise your right hand high above your head. Now, this is a weird level that a lot of people can't get to, so it's okay. We're going to bring them back out. You're both doing a perfect job. Lower your arm if it is raised and turn your body so you're facing each other like you were in the beginning. Now, remember, folks, they have no clue what's going on right now. Uh, they can still hear me and they can still hear you, but it's strange to go through this process and feel this energy around your body. So let's recap.
I don't care who you are, that's funny. <laughs> oh, you can clap, don't hold it in. If you hold it in, you'll fart. My friends Alfred and Seymour always say that, it's true. Ladies, we're gonna bring you back out. So I want both of you right now to hold out your right arm straight out toward one another. And right now, imagine that energy is gonna leave your body. It goes from your toes to your knees, up to those fingertips you have extended and it shoots from your fingertips. Zap, it's gone. Slowly lower your arm down by your side. I want you to remember where you're at, what you're doing. I want you to take both hands, reach up, grab your own blindfold, pull your own blindfold off to a thunderous round of applause. <laughs> Very good, good morning. Now the ladies will take uh, the blindfolds, but stay right here. We have some questions. Now you indicated that you felt some stuff, yeah? Mm -hmm. You felt uh, yes or no. Did you feel the two brushes on the arm? Yeah. Did you feel it once on your nose? Yep. Yep. And did you feel me um, take the microphone and tap you once in the back? Mm -hmm. And between 0% and 100%, how sure are you that you felt that? 100. 100%. <laughs> are you sure? Yes. Cool. And over here, you indicated the same stuff, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, twice down the arm, yeah? Yeah. And uh, once on the nose? Yeah. And did you feel me take the microphone and poke you in the back with it once? Yeah. And between 0% and 100%, how sure are you that you felt that? 100%. 100% and 100%. That's all the way percent. Well, here's the weird thing. Because you ladies had your uh, eyes closed and you were blindfolded, you missed everything that happened up here. Um, during that experiment, I only touched one of you. They're both going, yeah, it was me. <laughs> it was definitely you, definitely you. Okay, well, uh, we have, uh, I don't know, uh, thousands of witnesses here. We here's the weird thing. Uh, I'm going to let the audience spill the beans. Yes or no? Did I do those things to her? Yes. Did I ever touch her? No. Oh, felt it. No. Shut up. <laughs> did, it, did it seem real to you? Yes. Yes, it seems 100% real. Everything that you were experiencing is a living dream. It seems real, but it actually was just an electrical signal from your brain. The only thing you felt, let's put it this way, you felt every single thing that I did to your sister. All of it in, in all the places. Actually, I take that back. That would be a lie. The only thing you didn't feel was at the end, I took a Sharpie and I drew an X. Oh, wait, did you rub it off? Because it's not there anymore. Did you, like, lick it off? No. <laughs> what? Hang on a second. If everything that I did to you... <laughs> yeah, that X over there. Hold it up and show the audience. Let's get a shot of this on the camera. You can face them. In fact, Janine, bring out that other camera. Here, turn this way. Hold it up. We'll bring it up on the screen. It's right about there. Let's give these two a big round of applause. Come on. We have some stuff for you. Those are yours. You can take your jacket. Yep. And these are yours right here. These are parting gifts from me to you. Let's give these two a big round of applause. Come on. Well done, ladies. Enjoy the rest of the show. Keep it going. Come on. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, by the way, uh, there's a side effect from that. <laughs> Next time you stub your toe, she's going to feel it, so be careful. <laughs> oh, and if someone pokes you on Facebook, it shows up on her profile on the Internet. <laughs> Weird glitch in the Matrix. Now that I warmed up, are you guys ready to start the show? Yeah. We're just warming up, baby. So right now, right here, you have given yourself a very unique opportunity. Right here, right now. You have the chance to have your mind read while you're sitting in your seat. This is the segment of the show that I believe has literally taken me around the world. Right now, all of you in the audience are going to concentrate on something, a word, name, phrase, number, whatever it happens to be, and I'm going to try to figure out what's on your mind. Now, if you have the ability to write down your word, phrase, name, number, whatever it is, so that you can see it, it does help if you can look at it right now and stare at it. I use the part of the brain you use when you study or read something. 
Now, I'm not going to collect them at any time. They remain in your possession, uh, and you can put it on whatever you want. Uh, you can put it on the back of a ticket, text it into a phone. Uh, I know uh, we had some index cards on the podium by the door. If you got an index card on the way in and you have that in your possession, you're already set. You can write on whatever you want. If all else fails, all you have to do is close your eyes and in your mind write something on an imaginary piece of paper. The reason I want you to do that is two things. Number one, so I know your mind is dedicated to one thing uh, and that you don't change it. So if you are, I see people going to town, texting, taking things out of their purse. If you already have something written down or thought of, don't change it. The first thing that you have is the one you want to stick with. Uh, also, try not to tell the whole room what you're thinking. I know it's tempting to, to, to yell it out, but Keep it just to yourself. If you tell one or two people it's okay next to your family, but try to keep it to yourself if you can uh, and lock that in your mind. All I'm going to do is call out random topics, words, names, whatever, thing, whatever topics I yell out. If something makes sense to you, I just want you to raise your hand so I can see where you are. Uh, you don't have to stand up. You don't have to come on stage. You stay right in your seat. And I'm going to see if I can figure out specifically what it is that's on your mind. So everyone, right now, just think. Concentrate. Just think. Now, everybody's thinking of different topics, and I have to start somewhere. So let me start here. Where's the person? I believe their initials are SF, and they're thinking of the name of a pet. If that makes sense to you, just raise your hand if that's your thought. That makes sense right here. Janine's going to bring you a microphone so you don't have to yell at me. Grab that mic, and I just want you to tell me your first name and tell me where you're from. Sheila uh, from Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Here we go. Concentrate. And have you told anyone your thought, or you have not? No. No? Good. Think of it now. Uh, is it a dog you're thinking of? No. Cat? Yes. Call the cat to you in your mind. Just... Imagine the cat is on stage, and imagine I can call it to me. Just think of what you called it, like fluffy, sparky, whatever it is. Think of it. Does the cat currently have any health problems? No. No, because it's not coming to me. I don't <laughs> is the cat living? No. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm getting in my mind. Are you, in your mind, are you thinking, pss, 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 here, Phoebe? Yes. Yeah? Give her a round of applause. Come on, give it up. <laughs> I told you. Keep thinking, all of you. Go, just think. Where's the person with the initials, I believe, C-R, and I'm not sure if they're thinking of a teacher or something similar to those initials. I'm not sure if it's a teacher, but it, they're thinking of something that begins with an R. If that makes sense to you, just raise your hand. That makes sense to you. Does that make sense to anybody else as well? We'll try it right here. Jeannie, if you can hand a microphone right here. All right. Just grab that microphone. Tell me your first name and tell me where you're from. Carol. I'm from Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Have you told anyone your thought or you have not? No. Good. Think of it now. Now, yes or no, is it a teacher you're thinking of or you did not choose a teacher? No. It is not. Is it a dog? No. Um, is it a human being? No. Um, I won't ask. Actually, I'm the mind reader. Let me figure it out. <laughs> Just look at me and think of whatever it is. Are you thinking something R-I? Yes. R-I-P? Yes. I'll tell you what I'm getting. You just tell me if I'm right. Are you thinking in your mind, uh, are you thinking of Ripley? That's it. Cool. Let's give her a round of applause. Come on, give it up. <laughs> keep thinking. Just keep thinking. Where's the person with the initials NB thinking of something that starts with the letter A? If that makes sense to anybody, raise your hand. There's two hands right here. Janine, same thing. If you can hand the microphone right in here, just grab that mic. Now, I don't know. Do you two know each other? Yeah. You do? Hand that microphone down. And I don't know whose thought this is, so let's, let's do it. Both of you think at the same time. Do you know what each other is thinking or you do not? I'm sorry. Into the microphone, please. I'm no. not a mind reader. <laughs> do you know what each other is thinking? 
No. You don't. So is there a chance it could be the same thing? No. Highly unlikely? You're not no. sure? All right, let's try it. Think of the first two letters. We have A. Think of the second letter. I feel like it's an S. Does that make sense to either of you? Yeah. It makes sense to you? Yeah. Hold that mic real close to your mouth so we can hear you. Are you thinking of a male figure? Yes. Is he hot? <laughs> no, I'll tell you, I'm getting a name, but it's a unique, would you consider this a unique name? Yes. Does it end in an R? Yes. I'll tell you, are you thinking of a, somebody by the name of Asher? Yes. Cool, let's give her a round of applause, come on! <laughs> let's keep moving, come on, think. By the way, whoever keeps thinking of their ATM pin number, um, <laughs> thanks! <laughs> Keep thinking. Where is the person with the initials, I believe, B, M, and they're thinking of a date? If that's your thought, raise your hand. Over here. Is there anyone else? No? Oh, right here. Caitlin, if you can, hand the microphone over here. Same thing, just tell me your first name and tell me where you're from. Uh, Barbara, Philadelphia. Here we go. Concentrate on your thought now. Have you told anyone your thought or you have not? Yes. Okay, it's okay if you did. Who did you tell? Well, someone she, you know? She knew. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So it's someone you, you know, it's not a stranger you told? Okay. Right. Now, I want to point something out as well. I don't know you personally. We don't hang out in Philadelphia together. You don't work for me. You don't tour with me. You don't work for the casino. Uh, I didn't pay you money to come here to lie to everyone, correct? Correct. Uh, we don't date yet? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> if anyone can prove otherwise, I will give you one million dollars. That includes all the production staff and all of you in your seats. These are guests watching a show just like you. And I know it's unbelievable, but it's true. Think now. You know what, Janine, can you do me a favor? Can you grab the camera out of the back? I have a weird feeling. I, I, uh, I, I just started uh, a, a club. It's in the process. I'm organizing this membership club. Um, and for the club, we, we had to print these uh, plastic membership cards. And we haven't uh, started issuing them uh, yet, but it's coming up. And what they asked, they said, do you want anything stamped into the card? Um, you know how a credit card, has you can get things stamped into it? Could, could, one of, could you do me a favor? Could you rub that and verify that there's a, a, a date stamped in there, yeah? Now, this is the issue date for the, all, all the membership cards. All, uh, we ordered a few thousand of them. Now, um, uh, you said your name was Barbara? Yes. That is correct. Yes. Uh, Barbara, I don't want you to see this, but we're going to bring it up on the screen so that everybody in the audience can see. So what I want you to do is take the microphone, hold it close to your mouth, close your eyes, and just dip your head down. Uh, and I'll tell you when you can open your eyes, but we're going to talk while we do this. So ladies and gentlemen, take a look at the screens. We're going to bring this card on the screen so everybody can see the issue date that's actually stamped uh, right into the card. Raise your hand if you can read it, folks. Yeah? Cool. Now, Barbara, do me a favor. In what, what month are you thinking of? Is it January, February? What month? October. October, which is the 10th month of the year. And what um, n number or date within uh, October are you thinking? Is it the first, the second, the third? The eighth. The eighth. Now, uh, are you thinking of a year or you are not? Yes. What is the year? 2015. Eight, 10, 8, 15? Yes. Open your eyes and look at the screens. 10, 8. 15, right on the money. Very good, Janine. You can take that, and Janine's going to bring that down to you, and you can keep that card as a little memento. Give her one more big round of applause. Come on. <laughs> keep thinking, all of you. We'll try a few more. Just concentrate on your thought. Just think of it over and over again. And by the way, folks, keep, keep them clean. Half of the stuff you're thinking, I can't even say. <laughs> this is a family show. Now, I'm going to try something here. Um, we've been trying this, this, these experiments. Me and Janine and Caitlin practice 40 to 50 hours a week to be able to train to do mental experiments. Um, I want to try something right now that we've been practicing. Where's, where's the person? I believe their initials are AA, and they're thinking of a place. I feel it because I see a globe in my mind. If that makes sense? I hear here, right here. I'll tell you what, if we can, Caitlin, I'm, uh, Janine, I'm going to ask you to uh, hand the mic over there. And Caitlin, stay right where you are. <clears throat> We've been doing something called satellite training, uh, Caitlin and I. It's where I try to pick up on a thought, 
And then I try, if I can get it, to send it to Caitlin without using words. Uh, so we're going to try that right now. Tell me your first name, please, and tell me where you're from. Allison. I'm from Brigantine, New Jersey. All right. Concentrate on your thought now. Have you told anyone around you what you're thinking, or you have not? I told, I told my son. That's fine. That's, you should share everything with your son. That's perfect. It's a family. So concentrate on your thought right now. Now, Caitlin, I'm going to try to pick up on her thought. I mean, you know what? I'm not even going to write anything down. I'm just going to try to get it. I'll nod my head up and down when I feel like I got a sense of something. So let's start with how many words it is. It might be, uh, I don't know if it's a country, city, state. I don't know what it is. But just let's try the, the amount of words. So think of it right now. Is the thing you're thinking of two words? Yes. Let's try letters. Let's try the last letter. Let's do it in reverse. Think of the last letter. Is the last letter an N? Yes. Let's try for the first two. The first two letters, B and O, B-O. Yes. Let's try the whole thing. Actually, I'm getting a sense of something else. I see like a street sign in my mind. I don't know what this means. Caitlin, tell me if you can get it. I think I see the street sign too. Uh, it's does, weird. Does the street military... Something. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's... Uh, does that make any sense to you? Millet, I don't know if it's a road or a street. Does it make any sense? No. That's all right. No? Okay. Let's go for the whole thought. I don't know what that is. Just concentrate on it. It's, we're never 100%. It's weird. Try for the whole thing. Are you thinking of Boca Raton? Was that it? She's <laughs> digging something out of her <laughs> bosom. Yes, you can say it. Tell us. Yes. Yeah. Let's give her a round of applause. Come on. <laughs> well, uh, well, man, uh, ma ma'am, I'm glad you put it in a place where none of us could get to it without you knowing. Exactly. I'm not going Concentrate. Right Let's keep moving. Where's the person? I'm not sure, but I think their initials are R A, and they're thinking of a car. If that makes sense to you, raise your hand. There's a person all the way in the cheap seats in the back. Caitlin, if you can, take this one. She's going to hand you the mic. Same thing. Just tell me your first name and tell me where you're from. Ray from Tom's River. Ray, you said? Ray from cool. Tom's Hold River. Hold that mic real close and just concentrate. Uh, have you told anyone your thought or you have not? Just my nephew. Your nephew. All right. Concentrate on your thought right now. Just think of it. Now, let's start from the top. Can you picture it on stage? Could you imagine the car is here on stage with us in your mind? Yes. Try to see it. Try to see what it looks like in your mind. Try to envision the whole car. Now, first, uh, let, let's start from the top. What color was it? Was it black? What color? Blue. It was blue? Okay, try to picture it. See the color? I'll try to picture it with you. So it's a blue car. Picture it. Now, yes or no? Some people think of a year, or, and some people just skip a year and go for, like, a car. Yes or no? Are you thinking of a year, or you are not? I am. You are, okay. Do you folks want a little insight on how I'm doing this? Yes? Well, here, here's the thing. A lot of the uh, husbands in the audience will go, it's all a scam, they're all paid off, and they're here every night. No. A lot of the wives will turn and go, no, sweetie, he's just tuned into the spirits. <laughs> no. It's Sherlock holmes it out. Um, I'm going to take a look at him. I'm going to listen to the tone of his voice. He already told me where he's from. That's not to be polite. I ask that for getting information. It tells a lot about a person, how they're raised, how their lifestyle is. Knowing that, I can take a look at his style of dress. Now, he's in pretty much the last row in the back, so it's a little difficult. But knowing just, I can see the, the logo on his shirt and then know the style and the type of clothing he might wear. I could guesstimate uh, approximate age. I could guesstimate approximate uh, types of likes and styles. Uh, uh, you can listen to the tone of the voice, look at the face, the hair, 
Uh, ladies, you can paint your face with makeup all day. Your hands will always show your real age. Studying things like predictive behavior, like eight out of 10 women just looked at their hands. Uh, knowing all these things will actually help me figure stuff out. Knowing all the things I'm getting from you just in these brief moments, I'm gonna say the car you're thinking of is between 1970 and 1980. Just yes or no, am I correct so far? You are correct. Now, he's listening to the question and he's processing while I'm asking, so I listen to the pace at which he answers. He had to think about it, but not very long at all because he answered kind of quickly. Now, his cadence is very slow and relaxed and I have to take that into consideration. Um, I say it's probably between 1970 and 1975, given how you answered. Yes or no, am I correct so far? Yes, you're correct. Now, he knows that I'm analyzing how he's speaking, so I have to analyze if he's the type of person that's going to throw me <laughs> off. That's always uh, uh, by clothing and mannerisms and styles, in particular, where you're from. If you're flashy and you're wearing a fedora and you're the type of slickster that might try to throw me off, I might get nervous. But your cadence is very calm, which shows me that you might be easygoing and wouldn't. Given that, I'd say it's uh, probably either a 70, somewhere in the middle, like a 72 or a 73. Yes or no, am I correct so far? Yes, you're correct. Now it's hard, but it's down to 50, 50-50. It's down to not any year in the world, it's down to two just by reading him. Uh, I like even numbers, so this is a crapshoot. Are you thinking of a 1972? Yes. Ta-da! That's pretty good. But wait, there's more. You're thinking of more. You're thinking of the whole car, make, model, all that. Picture it, and imagine yourself in the car right now. In the front seat, sir. <laughs> First of all, right off the bat, I can see the logo. It's a Ford, am I right? Yes, you are. Now, do you currently own and drive this vehicle, or you do not? No. No, it's good, because I don't want you to think I saw you pull up in valet. That would be a little <laughs> obvious. I'll tell you what I'm sensing. You tell me if I'm right. Are you thinking of your old 1972 Ford Pinto? Yes, I am. Let's give it up. <laughs> and I thank you. Let's try a couple more, then I have to move on. Let's just think. Everyone, just think. I keep hearing, here, Phoebe. Psst, psst, psst. You can stop thinking now, ma'am. Where's the person with the initials? I'm not sure if it's SC or SLSC, maybe. Thinking of a time. If that's your thought, raise your hand. A time, time. Is there a here, a here, all the way over here? Janine, if you can, hand a microphone down there. Once you get that microphone, all I want you to do is tell me your first name, and again, tell me where you're from, but don't say anything about your thought. Your first name and where you're from? Stacy from Mays Landing, New Jersey. Here we go, concentrate right now. Have you told anyone in your section what you're thinking, or you have not? I have not. Good, think of it now. Now, yes or no, are you thinking of whether or not this time is a.m. or p.m., or you are not thinking of that? I am. You are. Think of it now. Is it a.m.? No. Then I'm sensing <laughs> p.m. Yes. That's why they pay me the big bucks. <laughs> think of it now. Is it in the six o'clock hour? Yes. You know what's funny? Time out a second. No pun intended. I, uh, when we designed this set, uh, we, we made it look like my old creepy house, and <clears throat> we got a clock, an old grandfather clock, but it doesn't work anymore. It stopped running, uh, and we don't know how to get it going again, but it's actually stuck on a, a, a time right here. Uh, in fact, <clears throat> it's stuck. Let me see where it is. And you, you can bring, a, get a nice shot uh, of this right here. Uh, the time on the clock, it's stuck at 626. What time are you thinking of? 626. Right on the money. Weird. Mind equals blown. We'll try one more. Where's the person, now I'm not gonna say this out loud, but where's the person with the initials, I believe AA, and they're thinking of a phone number that ends in a three. 
<clears throat> but don't worry, I won't say your phone number out loud. But raise your hand if that's your thought. It's a phone number that ends in a three. Right here, Caitlin, if you can hand a microphone over here. As soon as you grab that, just tell me your first name and tell me where you're from, please. Andrea from Broad Albany, New York. Here we go. Concentrate. Have you told anyone around you what you're thinking or you have not? I have. You have. How many people? Did you tell a friend, a family member? Family member. That's fine. You didn't tell any strangers. Think of it now. Just for the sake of time, please tell me your area code out loud. 518. 518. Think of the rest of it. Is the next digit an 8? Yes. And then a 1? Yes. And then a three? Yes. Think of the last four. I'll tell you what, let me ask you this. Do you have your phone with you and turned on right now? Yes. Is it on ring, vibrate? Vibrate. Do me a favor, turn it on ring. <laughs> One of two things are about to happen. I'm either going to call you or I'm going to call a complete stranger. Either way, this is going to be extremely entertaining. So do me a favor. I want you to hold your, uh, hold your phone near the microphone, and everybody just cross your fingers. <laughs> if that's you, answer your phone, and into your phone say, Wayne, you're amazing. Wayne, you're amazing. <laughs> Give it up for yourselves, because for that segment, you are the show. <laughs> Keep it going for Janine and Caitlin, everybody running around in high heels. <laughs> Very good. Mind equals blown. Now, I know what you're thinking. No, really, I know what you're thinking. A lot of people say, Wayne, if you can do these amazing things, why don't you go out to the casino and win tons of money, right? I get this a lot, all the time. And my answer is always the same. Someone will come up, they'll say, Wayne, why don't you win tons of money? And I just politely answer, I'm sorry, but uh, who told you that I don't? <laughs> I just uh, find it ironic that the last two casinos I performed for next door are now shut down. <laughs> I'm just making my way down the boardwalk. <laughs> How many gamblers do we have in the room? Anybody? Yeah? I figure there's at least a few. Well, this one's de dedicated to you. Right now, for this experiment, in a moment, we're going to select some people to help us out with a little experiment right here on stage. The only stipulation to volunteer is you need to be familiar with playing cards. You have to know the difference between, a, let's say, a club and a spade. Uh, that would be the puppy dog footprint looking one and the shovel looking one. There is no such thing as a clover. Uh, you have to maybe know general things. You don't have to know the rules of a game. You just need to know cards in general. Uh, and you have to be very excited to participate. And uh, we, if you've already volunteered, try to resist raising your hand for this because you know, we want to make it fair. We want to try to get as many people involved as we can. Uh, and uh, you have to be excited. So. Uh, who wants to have their mind read? Let's do it. Who's in? Who's really excited? Who is re you, sir, look very excited in the yellow. Yes, in the, the, uh, the white, yellow. Who's really excited? Who's in? Oh, you got it. He Come on up here. Come on. You get a clap. Yeah, in the black and white. Yeah. Yeah, do you want to do it? In the back, yeah, you got it, two hands up, that's you. Who's in? You got it in the black shirt. Let's do our man right here. Yeah, that's you, come on up here, brother, let's do it. Round of applause, come on, everybody. Come on in, we're gonna have you stand right here. Uh, your name? John. John, welcome, you can hang out right here. Watch that last step. Come on in, if you can, right here. Your name? Dawn. Dawn, and you are? Harris. Welcome to the party. Yeah, come on in. We're going to have everybody fill in. Ready? Right here and right here. Joe. Let's give these guys a big round of applause. Come on. <laughs> Welcome. Your name? Cool. And finally? Michelle. Michelle. All right, let's do it. Well, what we have, I picked out, we have five people, which makes a perfect poker hand. Now, uh, here's the uh, thing. Um, if you're on stage, freeze frame right now. Do not move. 
you moved. <laughs> Check this out. Uh, everything we're about to do is based upon what poker players call tells. Right here, she is in what's called a fig leaf position. It's like she's wearing nothing but a fig leaf. <laughs> this is a protective thing you go into when you're in a weird situation, like being on stage with a mind reader in front of thousands of people. You instantly go, this is weird protection. <laughs> now you moved into the uh, fig leaf position for some reason. You got a little more nervous. Uh, the two of you, well, you're protecting the back for some reason. <laughs> And you, well, you're just an enigma wrapped in a puzzle. Well, it's a nice shirt. Now, here's the, uh, here's the idea. In a moment, the five of you are going to be concentrating on something. Um, uh, do you, did you get a text, sir? You want to take a picture? <laughs> I don't show up in pictures, but we can do it anyway. Uh, am I ready? I, I was going to ask you if you're ready. I'm ready. I don't ask questions, I just do the stuff. Let's rock and roll. All of you, everyone in the audience and all five of you on stage, please do me a favor. In a moment, everyone's arms should be up uh, just in a second, so be prepared. If, uh, if I can ask, please, everyone here in the room, Please think of your favorite playing card, the one you like the most out of a deck of cards. Think of one and raise your hand. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Hands up, cool. Put your hands down. By round of applause, who thought of either a king, a queen, or an ace? If you did, round of applause now. Yeah? Look at that. That's 98% of folks. Uh, and, and two up here. Was yours an ace, sir? Yes, it was. Oh, was it the ace of spades? Yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is not mind reading. Uh, this guy is just very predictable, uh, <laughs> despite his unpredictable tendencies. Now, uh, was yours an ace as well? Yeah. Yes. Was yours a red ace? No. Do you want, you went for the spade? Yeah. She, she went for it as well. Ladies and gentlemen, two of them thought of the same exact thing. This is called statistics, not mind reading. Uh, I want to point this out because I'm an honest mentalist. Everything that I'm about to do, uh, we're about to do here on stage, has nothing to do with just chance or statistics and figuring out math and, and, and statistics. This is a learned ability. Now, like I told you, 40 to 50 hours out of the week, Janine, Caitlin, and I study and train to do little experiments. And since we're here at the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, uh, which is, of course, a casino, we decided to do some training on playing cards. Now, uh, speaking of the ladies, please welcome Janine and Caitlin out to the stage. <laughs> welcome to the party. Let's do it. So now, uh, here's the thing. Uh, I could just have you think of a card, but I could probably easily guess it. To eliminate the idea of statistics, we're going to have you guys think of a random playing card the same way you would get one on a casino floor, and that is by sheer and utter chance, happenstance. I have a deck of playing cards with a rubber band around it. They're rubber banded for a reason. We're not going to take any of the cards out. This is not a card trick like a pick a card, any card, okay? All you're merely going to do is this. You're going to take the deck, you're going to break it open somewhere in the middle at random, and you're going to peek at a card, the first card you come to, and you're going to memorize it. That's it. You're not going to take it out, you're not going to show anyone, you're just going to break them open, look at a random card, memorize the suit and the value, and that's it. Lock it in your mind. Now, here's the deal. Uh, I took the jokers out of the deck, so those are uh, gone, and don't pick the one on the front because this is a little obvious. It's an ace, it's right there, we could guess you would choose that. So go really, make it random, break it open, and look. Now, uh, so 52 cards here, minus the, the, the front card, of course, that means you have 51 selections to choose from. Uh, you're not gonna take it out, you're not gonna show anyone. If the person next to you tries to see your card, I want you to punch them. <laughs> But do it with your words, your words only, okay? So again, watch me carefully. You'll just break open the deck, look at the first card you come to, memorize it, and then you'll pass them down. You got it? Yeah. We'll start right here. Break them open, memorize the first card you come to, and then pass them down. Next person, break them open, memorize the first card you come to, and then pass them down. Third person, break them open, memorize the first card that you come to, and then pass them down. You'll break them open, memorize the first card you come to, pass them down. And once we get to the end, break them open, 
memorize that card, and go directly behind you and lay them on that little table behind you. Yep, right there. You got it. And step back right to where you are. Let's play. Now, the ladies are going to walk by the five of you, and they're going to look at you, and they are going to be the ones that are going to attempt to read you and read what you're thinking. Notice the hand gestures of both gentlemen right here went into the exact same thing with the thumbs. <laughs> Interesting. All I want you to do is think of that playing card over and over in your mind for them, okay? But first, everyone here, do not picture an elephant in your mind. Be 100% honest, who pictured an elephant in their mind? Round of applause if you did. You know why you did? Because you couldn't help it. It's locked in your mind. I gave you the verbal trigger, and you couldn't help but do it. We're going to do the same thing with you. That image that you just saw is locked in your mind. You can't escape from it. I'm going to be the trigger by saying all the cards in the deck. The ladies are going to try to read what it is you're thinking of. Are you ready? Ready. Are you ready? Yes. Let's do it, ladies. Let's rock and roll. And begin. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Resist hitting on them, sir. <laughs> Think of the card. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds. Are you ready? Uh -huh. You finished? Yeah. That's record breaking. The first show, it took them three hours. Okay, now they might get some of them, they might get all of them, they might get none of them. You never know. Every night is different. Uh, how many do you think you got? I think I have two. Two out of five? Okay, now, uh, if we don't get all of them, I'll try to fill in the blanks because I read uh, uh, some of it. Uh, Janine, how many do you think you got? I two. Two? So they might be the same person, they might be different, I don't know. So that means there's one missing. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. I think I have you. <laughs> Let me, got, I got them. Ladies, you can grab a seat. All five of you right here, think of your card right now. Think of the name of it. We'll see what the ladies got. They obviously didn't get all of them. I'll chime in on what they missed. Let's start here. Caitlin, what did you, what did you read? What did you get? I got the two of hearts and the five of diamonds. Janine? The queen of clubs and the eight of spades. And I got the ace of spades, so that's five cards. If we named your card, I want you to walk off the stage right now and go to your seat. <laughs> Love it. Woo! We got them! <laughs> Give it up for our five participants. Give it up for Janine and Caitlin. Come on. Well done. <laughs> Thank you so very much. We'll be hosting a cash poker game outside in the lobby after the show. <laughs> so uh, how many of you believe in luck? Round of applause if you believe in luck. Yeah? Well, I rely on it, and right now I'm going to push my luck in a little experiment. But in order to do it, we're going to select one of you right now with this red ball. We're going to throw this into the audience, and whoever it hits, I want you to catch it, and we're going to throw it three more times to make sure that whoever is selected is truly random. Uh, so in the end, we'll only have one participant, so, but we want to make sure it's random. And just for this one, and only this one, I ask that whoever volunteers, please be at least 18 or older, and you'll understand why for this one. So everybody, heads up!
Now catch it, catch it, catch it. Now we're gonna throw it three times. Ready? Don't think, just throw. One, catch it, two. Grab it one more time. Pick it up and throw. Hiya! All right, where is it going? Where is it going? That's going to you. Can you help me out? Come on up here. Let's give him a big round of applause. Come on, give it up. Welcome to the party. I'll take the ball a while. We're on a budget. We'll need that back. You're very welcome. Come on up. Now watch that last step. It's a little bit taller. You don't want to fall or you'll own a casino. What's your name? Tom. Tom, let's give Tom a big round of applause. Come on. Tom, we just need you right here for us. We have a few things on this table to use for this little experiment. All right, about here. Give it up one more for Tom. All right. So we have a few things you might be familiar with. Uh, these are styrofoam drinking cups. And then we also have under each one, we have uh, one of these. And this is a little wooden block. It's like a little candle holder, a little circular little wooden uh, candle holder type object. Now, uh, under the third one, we have something a little extra special, something a little dangerous. And that is a gigantic metal spike. We'll bring it on the screen so you can see. And it is very, very sharp indeed. Please be very careful for your own safety. Just touch the tip and verify that it is sharp. That is sharp. And uh, also, if you don't mind, I'll ask you to hold out your hand and just feel this and verify the weight of it. That's heavy, heavy right? Uh, it's, made, it's not made of rubber. It's like nope. solid metal. Absolutely. You have a few jobs. They're fairly simple, but they are important, OK? I'll explain them in thorough detail. It's very easy. Step one. You're going to take this metal spike, and you're going to put it inside of one of the holders. It's your choice. You just drop it right in, just like that, OK? Now, if you choose, you can move the position of the holders around. It doesn't really matter if you want to mix them up like that. That way you know they're you know, not in any particular order or special or marked, or I don't know what people think. But you'll choose one, OK? Right. When you're finished, you're going to cover all three of those yeah. with the cups. So uh, one will have the spike, and the other two will be covered. Now, again, you can trade the uh, position of the cups if you'd like. That way you know they're not marked or special. That way they're in a, you know, a different order. Whatever you want to do, it's your choice. It's entirely up to you. So that's that step. After you're finished with that, I want you to step around to this side of the table so that the majority of the audience can't see what you're doing. And I want you to mix them up on the table like this, just like this, so they're in a different order. So you'll do that. And then finally, you'll come back around okay, uh, to this side. Myself and the ladies will be over that way. So you want to have your back to us. And again, I want you to mix these up on the table so yet again they're in a different order. One final thing, one request. When you're finished, please don't have the cups very close together like this. When you're done mixing, I'm just going to ask you to keep some room in between them, maybe so you could fit a hand through, uh, so there's just space in between. You got it? Yep. So again, I'll recap. I'll put the spike in one of the holders, whichever you choose. You can mix them up if you want. Put the cups over top, and again, you can trade, trade the position. You'll walk around this way and mix. You'll come back around, mix again for a second time, leaving some space in between the cups when you're finished. You got it? Yep. And I want you to take your time here, but uh, one other thing. Uh, the ladies and I will not be watching this, and we're going to have absolutely no clue when you're finished. So we need, <laughs> we need you to give us a, uh, like a verbal, hey, I'm finished. Otherwise, we'll be at the bar taking shots all night. OK? So um, do you have any questions? Oh, good. You good? All right. Let's play. First, take this. And, uh, you ladies ready? Yeah. Let's kill the camera and uh, hit the bar. Now, you ladies can make whatever you want. I'm just going to relax tonight. Yes, indeed. What do you want, cherry? Huh? You, you all finished? You're finished? You're, you're good? OK, cause, good, because I was about to start staring at a ficus. Actually, I was corrected at one point. That is not a ficus. That is a feather leaf palm. Do you believe in luck? Yeah. I rely on it. 
At the top of my show before we got started, there were some video clips of some TV shows that I've done that were up on the screens. Uh, raise your hand if you got a chance to see that. Raise your hand, yeah? Most of you, yeah? On there was a clip of me in, uh, in, in Japan. I was uh, in Tokyo. Uh, raise your hand if you got a chance to see that. Well, while I was there, I actually picked up a handful of these coins. Um, they have two dragons on it, and I was told that they're for good luck. So I grabbed a whole handful of them uh, and said, I need all the luck I can get. And I always carry one of these with me. Now, I'm not a superstitious person at all. If you haven't noticed, I'm very analytical. But I always carry this with me. Uh, in 2008, January of 2008, I was on a commercial airliner flying from San Juan, Puerto Rico to Philadelphia. Halfway through the flight, while we were over the Atlantic Ocean, uh, the cockpit of the plane caught on fire. Uh, we were 45 minutes from the nearest airport or even land. The cabin filled with smoke. Um, somehow, we were able to make it. The fire was contained. As we descended for an emergency landing, the windshield of the cockpit shattered. Uh, the glass flew in, cut the pilot and the co-pilot's face. And somehow, without being able to see, they were able to descend and land that aircraft. Um, seven people were sent to the hospital. I survived this. I consider myself a very lucky person. Uh, what you're about to see, I do not perform this in every show. Uh, in fact, the first week of my residency here at the casino, I didn't perform it at all. I just didn't feel it. I just wasn't, I didn't have the feeling. But tonight, I'm going to press my luck. Now, yes or no, do, and, and don't tell me where if you do, but yes or no, do you know 100% sure where the spike is? Yes or no? No. You do not. Okay. Take a step to the left. So even if I were able to read your mind, there's no way I could be sure 100% if it is correct. The reason I'm asking, in a moment, I'm going to be slamming my hand down on one of these cups at full speed, like I'm going to smack it down, hoping for the best. So ladies and gentlemen, just for this one, I'm going to ask for a moment of silence. Do you believe in luck? Let's do it again. There's a moment every time I do this, and it's right now where I just literally, I have to accept the fact that it could go right through my hand. There's nothing more to it. There's no production. There's no countdown clock of death. It's just, it's going through my hand or it's not. <laughs> Let's give it up for Tom, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. <laughs> Let me shake your hand. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Keep it going for him. Come on, give it up. <laughs> you have no idea what that's like. Do not try that at home. Go to your neighbors and do it. <laughs> By the way, are you guys having a good time tonight? Yeah. All right. So, uh, Actually, after the show, uh, by the way, I just want to mention some things. After the show, I'm not going to disappear. I'm not going to whisk away into nowhere. I'm going to actually come out to the lobby to say hello to each and every single one of you. Uh, you could do a high five of Pounders. You could take a photo with me. I don't show up in photos, but we could try it anyway. Uh, 
but we'll be out there. And in fact, uh, we'll have our camera crew. You guys are on candid camera tonight. Uh, and we'll have a camera out in the lobby. If you guys want to, I'd love to hear what you thought of the show. Uh, and and uh, if you see the camera, feel free to walk up and just give in a sentence, I thought this or that. But I'd love to see them, and I will watch every single one of them. Uh, so so uh, come out, say hello into the camera, please, and uh, give us your feedback. Uh, tonight, we're having our red carpet event. So uh, it w we'll be out in, in the lobby uh, on the red carpet. If you guys want to take a souvenir photo with your family, uh, they'll be for sale for 10 bucks out there. Uh, if you're here with someone and you're the romantic type, you can come out. It could be just your family. I could stand in the background and give you uh, the, the bunny ears. Uh, all the proceeds are going to benefit the Hoffman Foundation, which is a foundation I've started to help inner city youth experience live theater like this and fill empty seats in theater. So uh, that's going to happen out in the lobby. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So it's something I'm very passionate about. Uh, so that'll happen. There'll be a table with some other stuff, some T-shirts uh, for the tour. Mind equals blown shirts are out there for sale. There's going to be a DVD. It's called Secrets to a Super Memory. It's me on the DVD teaching you how to have a, an insane memory. I can memorize a list of objects forward and backwards. If you listed a, a list of 100 objects, let's say an imaginary grocery list, you just rattle them off without writing them down at all. I can memorize them, and not only memorize them, but memorize them in order, forward and backward. If you said, Wayne, what's number 37? I could say, that was the Swiss cheese, and I would be right on. Uh, if you ever said you had a bad memory, you don't. You just have an untrained memory, uh, and the DVD will teach you how to do it. And on the DVD, to keep it short, I teach you up to 10, but the same method applies all the way up to however many you want to practice with. The ironic part is the people with the bad memories are going to forget that I even just said that. <laughs> So that's out there. Uh, the lucky coins that I told you I grabbed on my tour through Asia, I realized uh, recently that I don't need 30 of them. I have mine. Uh, so I said, we're in a casino. Maybe some people need some good luck. So they're going to be out there uh, if you, if you want to grab one. And, and those are going to be gone tonight. Um, uh, we also have one, uh, two, two other things. There's a cool blue envelope. You'll see it out there. And you can ask Janine and Caitlin to demonstrate it for you. It's amazing. It's one of the first mentalism things I learned, and I still do it. It's the only secret that I'm really revealing uh, because it, it's just awesome, and it's easy to do. It's called mind control. It's a mind trick where you have three cards laying on a table, and you can bet someone that you can tell them which one they're going to pick and you'll be right 100% of the time. And I still perform this professionally. In fact, I saw a guy two nights ago in the Ego Lounge downstairs actually use it on somebody and want a free drink. I thought that was hilarious, and I was watching. And then he looked at me and he went, <laughs> it was awesome. Anyway, I wish I could have got that guy's name. But uh, that, that, that'll be out there. And again, the ladies will show you. Just say, hey, show me the blue envelope trick, and they'll show it to you. It's cool. And finally, um, I grew up in uh, the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania. Um, I uh, moved around a lot as a kid. I grew up in the inner city, and then I moved out to the middle of nowhere in the farmlands. And growing up, I didn't have much. My mom was a waitress. My dad worked in a foundry. Um, I wore hand-me-down clothes. And my dream was to travel around the world. I told people when I was a kid, I was like, one day I'm going to do magic and read people's minds, and I'm going to travel around the world, and I'm going to be on TV. And everyone thought I was crazy. And of course, my family was like, OK. And uh, as I grew up, I never stopped telling people that. I said, one day, you'll see, I'm going to be on TV, and I'm going to read people's minds and travel around the world. And in my teens, people started to tell me, well, now, Wayne, you have to start thinking realistically. You have to get a real job. There's no way you'll be able to do that. That's impossible, they said. Um, let's fast forward. I've been to 61 different countries all over the world. I've been on every major TV network in North America, uh, cable networks. I've filmed TV shows internationally, three TV shows on every major network in Japan. Uh, I was just on the Today Show just a few days ago in New York. I was just on America's Got Talent uh, about a month ago. I sat in the chair with Ellen. Ellen interviewed me. I read Ellen's mind on the TV show. Uh, CNN followed me with the camera crew through Georgia. And who am I? Uh, but more importantly, out of all that, I'm live right here performing for all of you. And in the end, it worked. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Now, here is my point. Uh, no matter where you're from or what your background is or where you are in life right now, no matter what you want to do, you can do it. And you hear that a lot. 
and people say, follow your dreams. What does that mean? Well, a friend of mine asked me how I did it. I went from nothing to literally, I hit every single goal I have ever made in my life up until today. And I'll tell you what, it's a strange thing. Because when you get here, you're like, well, now, now what? You know, you have to create new things. Well, I told my friend over a three-hour period how I achieved all of this stuff and my way of thinking. I have a me methodology and a way of thinking to, to, that, to create all this. And he, at the end of this, he said, Wayne, you need to write a book. And that's why I'm telling you this. Um, I took his advice. Ironically, I hate reading. Uh, but I wrote this because one day when I leave this earth, um, you know, you might have had a great time tonight, um, you know, but my legacy is going to be this information because I truly believe in there what I, I've written is, is the key to doing whatever you want in life. I don't care if you want to own 13 companies, 18 houses, reestablish relationships with family you haven't seen in years. Whatever your goal or dream is, um, I don't care if you literally want to walk on the moon, literally step foot on the moon. That book will show you how to do it. And that's a bold statement, but it's very true. Um, if you get the book, not necessarily tonight, but ever, and you don't get something from it, email me. My email address is in the book, uh, and I will send you your money back. Everything that's in there will change lives. Now, you can go and put it in the slot machine instead and have fun with it. That, that, that's okay. Or you can uh, grab the book. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to buy something to come out and say hello either. In fact, if you're uh, under the age of 18, uh, come out and get a free poster outside. That's on me. Uh, just find the ladies and come out. Uh, and if you guys had a good time, you don't have to scream and throw babies in the air. If you had a great time, just come out uh, and, and tell somebody. We're only here till August 30th. A tweet, a phone call, a text, tell your neighbor you had a great time and they should see the show and that's good enough for me. Uh, are you guys ready for the last one? Yeah? Let's do it. Every single person in this theater is still the same person that they were when you were a child. All of you are still the same person. Two things change. You get older and you learn stuff, and that's it. But something happens over time. You lose the sense of wonder you have when you're a little kid. And you start getting stuck in a grind, a routine. You get up, go to school or work, come home, eat dinner, fall asleep, and you do it all over again, Monday through Friday. Maybe on the weekends you go out and have some fun, but Monday morning, same thing, you go through that routine again. Even if you're retired, you have that same routine. You get up, read that same newspaper, drink that same cup of coffee, eat that same breakfast at that same spot. And before you know it, you ask yourself a question. You say, where did the years go? I actually think I figured out the answer to that question. Time disappears in the moments when you just fudge your way through life like a robot, when you don't live with the same sense of wonder you had when you were a kid, you know? How, how about this? You probably know what I'm talking about. Did you ever uh, drive somewhere, and when you get to the, your destination, you kind of wake up out of a funk? You wake up, and you can't remember anything about that drive you just took? Ra raise your hand if, if, if you know what I'm talking about. How about this one? You ever uh, notice when you take a shower, when you wash your body, you wash the same part of your body first every single time, and you might do it in the same order every single time. You could do that routine at 4 a.m. with your brain removed. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah? How about this one? Did you ever, uh, halfway through your shower, you kind of wake up out of a funk, and you forget if you washed a certain part of your body, so you do it anyway to make sure you hit it? Raise your hand if you've ever done this. <laughs> By the way, next time that happens to you, it's going to be awkward because you'll be naked and you'll start thinking of me. <laughs> My uh, photographer out here, he told me, Wayne, he goes, every time I shower, I think of you. <laughs> Sorry, Hector. So uh, here's the point, folks. Don't go through life hypnotized. Use the sense of wonder you have. You know, when you're a kid, every day is magical. Every single day. You can find something as silly as a cardboard box. Big empty, maybe a big empty box you would put a refrigerator in, right? And when you find that box and it's empty and you're a kid, what do you turn that box into? 
a house, a fortress, whatever. The point is you turn it into something. You climb inside, you have your flashlight, you have your friends come over, it's exciting, right? Now, to all the adults in the room, if you went home after the show, immediately left this theater and went home, and there was an empty, beat-up cardboard box on your doorstep, just sitting there, be honest, what would it be to you now? Trash, garbage, recycling, rubbish, something to throw away. And you would probably get angry and upset, like, who's putting trash on my doorstep? You would get angry that you found that box. The box didn't change. You didn't change either. What changed are your thoughts about the box. And your thoughts are the only thing in this universe that you can actually control. We are all actors playing the part of an adult. We, we just compartmentalize our childhood into a little box and say, when I was a kid, like you're a different being. You're the same person. Right here on the screens, take a look. That's a picture of me. Now, notice what I said. I said it's me. I didn't say me when I was a child. I said it's me because it's still me. Right up here reading people's minds. Coming up right here, this is me. You may recognize me from the movie Children of the Corn. <laughs> but that's me. And here I am, years later. You know, my hands tell my age. I have these lines. They're getting deeper. I can't see without my contact lenses. I, uh, I have hair growing from my face. But guess what? That's still me. Do me a favor. Actually, let me rephrase that. Do yourselves a favor um, right now. This, this is for you, not me. I'll do it with you. I want you to close your eyes. Just do it. I'm not going to steal your wallet. <laughs> close your eyes, and I want you to picture yourself as a child at any age. Maybe go back and recall an old photograph of yourself. You're still the same person. Slowly open your eyes. And here you are, years later. Same person, different mind. Right now, I'm going to help all of you recapture that sense of wonder that you used to have, but I need your help to do it. We're going to try a little experiment. Who can see what's left of my Coca-Cola? Raise your hand if you can see it, yeah? Of course, that's reality. Watch. <sighs> Who saw me consume it? All right, reality. Now we use imagination, the real kind. forget when I cracked this open, but who saw me drinking this throughout the show? Raise your hand, of course. In fact, we'll bring the can up on the screens here so that you guys can see it. Raise your hand if you can see the fact that it's crushed, yeah? And uh, keep it up if you can see the hole and you saw me pour it out and drink it. Mm -hmm, that's right. Now check it out. I want you to imagine and believe that every time my finger goes around this can, that we can go one minute back in time. But I want you to believe it. Let's start with the fact that the can is crushed. I want you to imagine and believe we can just take the dents out of the can. Watch the dents and just believe. Just imagine we can go back in time. Raise your hand if you can see the fact that the dents are coming out of the can. Yeah? Now, we still have a hole, obviously. I want you to imagine and believe that we can take the hole away from the can. Imagine that I can grab the nothingness and get rid of it. Imagine I can hold nothing. And if you imagine something strongly enough, like grabbing a hole, it becomes your reality. That hole is completely and utterly 
resealed. Could you do me a favor here in the front? Could you just tap on that and verify that it's resealed? Resealed, right? It's completely resealed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to imagine that we can refill the can. Now, listen, there's nothing in there yet, listen, but I want you to imagine we can refill it. Just believe. It's getting heavier. It's filling up a little bit. Listen, listen. This is just a little, I want it all the way though, come on. Just believe. It's getting heavier again. It's, it's, that's completely filled. Now, make it cold again. It's getting colder and colder and colder. I can feel it. It's getting right here, sitting down. Feel that and tell me, is it getting colder and colder? You feel it getting colder, don't you? Yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, when you leave here, you're going to go out to the real world and you're going to tell everybody, uh, I saw this show and I saw a guy predict the future and he read people's minds and he even traveled back in time. And when you tell people this, they're not going to believe you. And they're going to say, that's impossible. Think realistically, they'll say. And then they're going to say, what was this guy's name? And you're going to say, I have no idea. <laughs> you're laughing because you know it's true. You'll forget. <laughs> Tell them Wayne Hoffman did it. And as you go through life, please just remember one thing. Imagination is extremely powerful. Cheers. And I'll tell you what, lovely lady, this is for you. You can keep the can. Thank you guys so much. Cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks for coming out. Good night.